When a modern Boeing 787 Dreamliner from Air India recently went down, it shook the aviation world. How could one of the safest, most advanced jets fail so catastrophically? But here's the harsh truth. Asia has seen some of the deadliest Boeing crashes in history, and many of them weren't about high-tech malfunctions. They were about human mistakes, bad repairs, and decisions made in the fog of stress or storms. Today we're diving into 10 of the worst. Some are infamous, some are haunting, but every single one changed the way we fly. August 12, 1985, Japan Airlines Flight 123, a Boeing 747SR packed with 524 people, is cruising over Japan when, boom, catastrophic decompression shreds the cabin. The culprit? A botched repair from a 1978 tail strike. Instead of replacing the damaged rear pressure bulkhead, mechanics slapped on a weak splice plate. It was like patching a burst pipe with duct tape. The failure wasn't just a crack, it tore off the vertical stabilizer and all hydraulic systems. Imagine driving without steering or brakes. That's what the crew was up against. Still, they kept the crippled jet airborne for 30 excruciating minutes before crashing into Mount Osutaka. Only four survived. With 520 fatalities, it remains the deadliest single aircraft disaster ever. But the legacy? Massive changes to inspection and repair protocols. Aviation finally stopped trusting quick fixes on aging airframes. Next stop, Guam, where fatigue and miscommunication turned a routine landing into disaster. August 6, 1997. Korean Air Flight 801, a 747-300, is descending into Guam on a stormy night with 254 people aboard. Conditions are bad, rain, low visibility, but that's when you slow down and stay sharp, right? Instead, the fatigued crew rushed through a sloppy briefing and descended below the safe altitude. Making things worse, the airport's ground warning system was offline. They hit Nimitz Hill just short of the runway. 228 people died. The survivors? Mostly those in the tail. This wasn't just pilot error, it was a wake-up call. Fatigue, poor CRM, and a broken cockpit culture forced Korean Air to reinvent itself. Over time, they transformed from a troubled airline to one of the safest in the world, but only after tragedy struck. Now back to South Korea, where dense fog and poor decisions proved fatal. April 15, 2002. Air China Flight 129, a 767-200ER, is trying to land in Busan through thick fog. With 166 people on board, the crew attempts a visual circling approach, basically flying by sight when you can barely see anything. Unsurprisingly, they lose situational awareness and slam into a hill, killing 129. But it wasn't just the fog. The real issue was in the cockpit. Poor coordination, unclear decision-making, and ignoring signs of an unstabilized approach. This crash pushed South Korea to tighten pilot training and approach procedures, especially in low visibility. Because even the best tech can't save you if the crew isn't working together. But we're not done with repair disasters just yet. This next one is chilling. May 25, 2002. China Airlines Flight 611, a Boeing 747-200B with 225 people aboard, vanishes over the Taiwan Strait, literally breaks apart midair. The reason? Another tail strike from 1980, repaired with a patch instead of a proper fix. For 22 years, microscopic cracks quietly grew until the airframe couldn't hold together anymore. Everyone on board died. The kicker? This happened after the Japan Airlines 123 tragedy. How is this still happening? The crash triggered global reviews of maintenance on aging jets. Airlines started treating old repairs with the scrutiny they deserved, because sometimes what's hiding under the paint is far more dangerous than anyone realizes. Now let's head to Pakistan, where weather and inexperience proved a deadly combination. Weather and inexperience proved a deadly combination. April 20, 2012. Boja Air Flight 213, a 737-200, is approaching Islamabad in a vicious thunderstorm. 
lightning, wind shear, torrential rain. The 127 souls on board had no idea the cockpit was out of its depth. Both pilots were undertrained on the aircraft's automated systems. When wind shear hit, they froze. Instead of diverting, the captain pressed on. The plane lost control and crashed just short of the runway. Why didn't they turn back? Weather screamed abort, but poor judgment and inexperience sealed their fate. This crash forced Pakistan to overhaul its pilot training and weather protocols because flying into a storm without the skills is asking for disaster. March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 3-70, a Boeing 777-200ER, takes off from Kuala Lumpur with 239 people on board headed for Beijing. Then, poof, it disappears. No distress call, no wreckage, just gone. The plane diverted west over the Indian Ocean, its transponder and communications deliberately switched off. Satellite data hinted at a calculated flight path, but to where and why? Theories range from hijacking to pilot suicide to mechanical failure, but as of 2025, we're still chasing shadows. This isn't just a crash, it's aviation's greatest mystery. The one thing everyone agrees on, the plane's final resting place is somewhere in the vast Indian Ocean, but even high-tech searches have found only fragments. The real gut punch is the families left with no answers. This disaster forced the industry to rethink tracking systems. Now, planes ping their location more frequently, and transponder rules are tighter. But let's be real, no tech can solve a puzzle this wild. Speaking of wild, our next crash takes us from mystery to outright warfare. Just four months later, on July 17, 2014, Malaysia Airlines gets hit again. Flight 17, another Boeing 777-200ER, is flying over eastern Ukraine with 298 people on board. Out of nowhere, a Russian-made book surface-to-air missile rips through the sky, exploding near the cockpit. The plane breaks apart mid-air, scattering debris across a war-torn region. Everyone on board is lost. Here's the truly infuriating part. This airspace was still open to civilian flights, despite an active conflict below. Who thought that was a good idea? The missile was linked to separatists in Ukraine, but the geopolitics are a mess. Finger-pointing, denials, the works. This wasn't a mechanical failure or pilot error. It was a plane caught in the crossfire of war. The fallout? The aviation world finally got serious about avoiding conflict zones. The International Civil Aviation Organization and airlines rewrote rules to keep planes far from trouble. But don't get me wrong, the real tragedy is that 298 lives were lost before anyone acted. Let's move to a crash where human senses, not missiles, betrayed the crew. March 19, 2016, Rostov-on-Don, -on Russia. Fly Dubai Flight 981, a Boeing 737-800, is trying to land in brutal weather. Think howling winds and near zero visibility. After one failed approach, the crew goes for a second try, but things get really crazy. During the go-around, the pilots likely fell victim to a somatographic illusion, a fancy term for when your body tricks you into thinking you're climbing when you're actually diving. The captain pushed the nose down, and the plane plummeted, killing all 62 on board. This wasn't just bad weather. It was a deadly combo of disorientation and inadequate training for high-stress go-arounds. The crash screamed, we need to prep pilots better. Airlines doubled down on simulator training for spatial disorientation and extreme weather scenarios. It's wild to think your own senses can betray you like that, but in the dark, with wind screaming, it's a pilot's worst nightmare. Now let's talk about a crash that wasn't just a mistake, it was a scandal. October 29, 2018, off the coast of Indonesia. Lion Air Flight 610, a brand new Boeing 737 MAX 8, takes off with 189 people on board. Minutes later, it's in the Java Sea. The culprit? A faulty angle of attack sensor feeding bad data to the MCAS system, a new feature Boeing barely mentioned in the manuals. This system kept pushing the nose down, and the pilots, untrained on MCAS, fought a losing battle. 
It's like your car suddenly deciding to steer into a ditch and nobody told you about the feature. Here's the truly outrageous part. Boeing knew MCAS could be tricky but didn't disclose its full risks. The fallout was massive. Global groundings of the 737 MAX redesigns and a firestorm over regulatory oversight. The real sting? 189 lives were lost because of corporate shortcuts. This crash, and another in Ethiopia months later, forced Boeing to own up and regulators to tighten the screws. But don't think we're done with mysteries. Our final crash is a head-scratcher. March 21st, 2022, China Eastern Flight 5735, a Boeing 737-800, is cruising at 29,000 feet over southern China with 132 people on board. Then, out of nowhere, it nosedives, nearly vertical, straight into the ground. No distress calls, no mechanical issues flagged in the flight data. U.S. intelligence hinted at intentional control input, but as of mid-2025, the investigation's still open. Was it sabotage? A mental health crisis? We just don't know. This crash is the one thing that keeps aviation experts up at night. A perfectly fine plane doesn't just dive like that. The lack of answers sparked heated debates about pilot mental health screening and cockpit security. China's aviation authority tightened protocols, but without a final report, we're left guessing. It's a haunting reminder that even in 2022, with all our tech, some crashes defy explanation. And there you have it the 10 worst Boeing crashes in Asia, from catastrophic repairs to mysterious dives. Each one's a lesson in what not to do, and together, they've reshaped how we fly safer today. Which crash blew your mind the most? Drop it in the comments, smash that like button, and subscribe for more aviation deep dives. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies, and maybe double-check those maintenance logs.